decided to do a video just talking about uh, one of the modifications that I've done to uh, to helmets in the past, um, and it's sort of just an alternative to this style of like almost hard hat webbing. Uh, whether these are authentic or not for Viking, I don't know. I don't think there's a surviving lining, so there's no way to tell one way or the other. Um, but they do appear in later period helms, so could be. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of these. Uh, on a helmet like this, I think it tends to wobble and it's not really wedged onto your head properly. Um, you should really be able to use the helmet without a chin strap, uh, without it just falling off your head. Um, these ones, if you tried to do that, this would just fall right off. Um, I do recommend wearing chin straps, that way it doesn't end up going off your head and you don't go, you don't get brained because, you know, you were stupid and didn't really wear your helmet properly. Um, and especially if your helmet has a face mask, the, uh, or face plate, the, uh, the chin strap does help that from swinging into your face, uh, like Vendel Helms or Top Helms or something like that. It's very, very, or even Yermabu style, um, spectacle helms. It's very good to do up the chin strap properly so you don't get smacked in the face, but you should be able to get away with a little bit of not using it. Um, so one of the modifications that I do is actually this where you pat it out. So it's almost like an ermine cap or something. And um, you could actually do this with, uh, to a certain extent, with uh, the fleece on sheepskins. Uh, but what I do is really just make this kind of thing. And it's basically the, uh, the same pattern as the four panel hats that I make uh, that are just formed into pillows, stuffed, sewn to a, a band that's also stuffed and then that gets shoved inside the helmet. And I don't sew these pieces together, so that way it has an easier time fitting to different types of helmets. Um, this, this brim, or this, uh, this hat could actually fit inside of a Spangen helm, a conical helm, just as easily. Um, it might need a little bit of extra padding up inside to stop it from sliding way up inside, but it could do that, no problems. Uh, if it's riveted or stitched to the rim or the existing liner, which you can untie the little knot inside and then just slide it in and stitch it around the outside. You wouldn't really need to put much extra padding in the top because your head is still padded and it's not going to slide anywhere. Um, unfortunately, you know, there's so much batting in this, uh, it wouldn't fit on my head that way, but uh, that's just because I have a big head. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a very, very simple way to pad out a helmet. Uh, and, and again, you can rivet it or stitch it to the, the helmet. Uh, some people like to, to glue liners in and stuff. A lot of manufacturers do. Uh, the manufacturer of this one, there were absolutely no rivets holding the liner in, so the existing liner just fell out. So, and the strap uh, was also uh, sewn to the liner, not to the, the actual helmet. So it uh, had to take it out, rivet the strap back in, and put this liner in. And it just pops right in there and it's perfectly fine. Um, and it, it, it only slides around a little bit, and with the chin strap on, and the uh, basically the wedging effect of your head, it holds into the helmet fairly well. Uh, if you want more strength, obviously stitch it or rivet it in. Other than that, uh, you should be fine. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope this tip uh, works out for some people. Um, it's a great modification. So, okay.